All right, so on the back of the other video I made the other day, the only workout I do, this is the only stretch routine that I have. I'm gonna foam roll first and then I'm gonna do some static stretches as I believe mobility and flexibility is probably two things I should always have even as I get older, even when I'm 80 or 90. I'll obviously lose speed, stamina and strength along the way, but flexibility and mobility should be things that I have even when I'm much, much older. So let me get my foam roller and let's get started. I always start foam rolling from top to bottom, so I always start with my back first, upper back to be exact, and then I move further down my back and then I move on to my legs. So I try and go for about like eight to ten rolls on my back. It really just depends on the day. It's just the upper back and then on the lower back you gotta be careful because obviously it depends on what kind of condition you're in, you know, how your lower back feels but I don't overdo the lower back, just a little bit. And then I move on to the hips and then the glutes and the hamstrings and all of that. So just to open up the hips a little bit, I like to foam roll and it feels really nice. This is probably one of my favorite um, foam rolling areas because you can really just, you can feel it. You can feel the knots coming out as you roll. By the way, the foam roller that I have, it's a grid X and this one is so, so good. So if you look at this one, it's so, so good. And it's the grid X extra hard, whatever version. I've actually broken multiple foam rollers in my life before. Oh, sorry. Actually, the brand is called uh, Trigger Point. I can see it on the inside here. It's called uh, Trigger Point. So they have this trigger point grid X and it's super, super good. So I'm, I'm going with the left hamstring now. And again, I'm gonna do about eight to 10 rolls. It really just depends, you know, on the day. My left hamstring is usually tighter than my right hamstring, but it, yeah. Today it doesn't feel too bad. So I'm gonna do a couple of rolls and then move on to my left calf. So here, what I like to do is just give it some gentle rolls. I rotate my calves around and then I can stretch all bits of my left calf. Usually my calves are not too tight, so it usually feels okay. And then I move on to the other side. So my right calf, I'll do the exact same thing. And then hamstring. Again, just a couple of rolls, not too, too many. And then I move on. There you go. Just to get the hips here as well. On the right side. This feels really good. Really, really good. If you're starting out, with a foam roller and if you've never foam rolled before I would encourage you to go with something super soft as the first time I foam rolled I have to say it was painful it was really painful I remember it was um, second year uni when I first started stretching and foam rolling and doing mobility exercises let's just say I sweat more during my well, end of workout stretch routine compared to my workout because it was just so painful. So now that I'm done with this, the next thing I like to do is move on to the front of my legs. So the most important bit, to be fair, I think it's the IT band right here that a lot of people struggle with. So very simple, just get onto the front and then I foam roll like this. And then what most people struggle with is gonna be the IT band. So the IT band is this right here on the side and you can see that I can put a lot of pressure on it now. Both sides, like it doesn't matter if it's my right or left IT band. Ah, oh, this feels nice. And then I switch sides. Let's get the left IT band as well. 
I can put pretty much all my body weight into it now, but if you're just starting out, the way you can uh, alleviate the pressure on your IT band is, let me show it from this way, is that you can put your left foot down when you're foam rolling your right IT band, and then obviously depending on how much weight you put onto here, it can alleviate the pressure and the weight you put into your right IT band. Yeah, so that's a good way to do it if it really hurts initially. Be careful, obviously. Then inner thighs at the end, so this is super simple. This is also a great stretch, I think, especially when I'm doing front squats, because the front squats work these muscles quite hard. This is a good stretch as well. Obviously the other side too. Just a couple, honestly it really just depends on the day because sometimes my muscles are very loose, sometimes they're super tight, so depends. My shins at the end, just roll them a tiny tiny bit, nothing crazy. Let's do both sides, I'll do the right side as well. And then that's my foam rolling routine, it's super simple, really quick. And now I'm gonna move into the static stretches. I have this great little mat and I got this from Mirafit, just like many other things. And the way I like to start, it's very simple. So hips first. And I hold for about, I don't know, five seconds, maybe a little bit more, depends on the day and how I feel. And then I do the other side. If there's one thing you're taking away from this video, please let it be this, is that foam rolling and stretching is so, so important. Probably more important than working out itself. And then the next thing I do is, again, a little bit more on the hips. For me personally, it's always my hips that are the tightest and I probably spend the most time stretching the hips and the hamstrings. I don't hold for too long, it really just depends on the day. I mean, it's meant to be a 10 minute stretch and foam rolling routine that you can do every day. It's super simple. And then for my shoulders, when I, let's say, do a lot of push exercises, what I like to do, and this is quite a, an intense stretch, so don't start out with this, obviously, if you're not used to stretching your shoulders and your chest, is I simply just put it behind my back, like this, and then I'm able to, to stretch it out. And currently my right shoulder is getting a great stretch, but this is quite extreme and intense. So obviously don't do this if you don't have this kind of flexibility or mobility. I cannot emphasize this more, but safety first. So I've been stretching my shoulders for quite a couple of years now, so I can easily do this. If you obviously cannot do this, don't get injured, don't force it. Make sure, always consider safety first. Then after this, I move into my lower back and my hamstrings. So today I actually feel quite good. I can go relatively deep, I would say, with my stretches, even on the first try, which is really good. My lower back tends to be quite tight usually because, I mean, I sit a lot. Well, to be fair, I do have a standing desk and I stand a lot as well, but it's just staying in one position for too long. It's just not good with a desk job. So this is a great stretch for my hamstrings and my lower back, really, really good. And uh, after that, Again, it'll be the hips. So, oh, this is one of my favorite stretches. You can feel that my left hip and my hamstrings, they're getting a really, really nice stretch here. I hold this for quite a while, usually. I mean, depending on the day, obviously, but this is just so comfortable. If I wasn't making a video right now, I'd probably have my phone here with me, look through some stuff. And I also really enjoy doing this specific stretch afterwards. If you know what the name of this is, please let me know in the comments below. 
And then I'll just do the other side as well, of course. Hopefully, at this rate, given that I stretch every day, I'll still be able to do this when I'm 90 years old. We shall see. I always think it's crazy how asymmetrical we are, because for me, it's always my left side that is more rigid. And it's, it's always just the right-hand side that always just feels better, probably because it's my stronger side. I'm right-handed and, um, well, when I play football, right-footed as well. So it could just be because of that, but my right side is always a lot looser. All right, and then I just move on to the, to the hamstring, so I don't hold it for too long. It can really range from a couple of seconds to 30 seconds. Yeah, today everything feels quite good. And then I'll do the left side. I feel like the ability to touch your toes with your legs straight should just be standard for anybody. And that's, I think, about it. And then at the end, obviously, if I want to, I can always just stretch out the hips a little bit more. What can I say? I do love stretching those hips. That's about it. So. I don't know how long this was, probably 10 minutes. I do this pretty much every day. So even on days when I don't work out, I tend to stretch. I definitely stretch more often than I work out. I used to work out, I think five, six times a week. Now, I think I work out three to four times a week, maximum. So stretching is something that I think is inherently more important than working out because you want to stay mobile and you want to stay flexible as the years go on. The amount of people I see who get into their 30s, 40s and cannot even bend down and lean down and touch the floor like this, for example, too many. So please stretch, be healthy and I'll see you in the next one.